again this meeting, this hearing of uh, Pima County Flood Control with Green Things Incorporated's appeal. We're call to order and begin with Pledge of Allegiance. I do have a flag available. There you go. All right. I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and to the Republic, the Republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation under God, <coughs> indivisible, <coughs> liberty, liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Right, thank you. <coughs> all right, uh, item two, we'll begin with uh, Green Things Incorporated's appeal. Uh, I guess I'll, I'll start and just kind of to introduce the, the topic, but it will mostly be uh, not me speaking. So this is the Board of Hearing Review is, is meeting uh, because uh, Green Things requested review of the Chief Engineer's final decision and order. And the uh, what, you know, uh, the Board of Hearing Review's task is today is to look at the record that was presented to the hearing officer that was used to make the hearing officer's decision and the chief engineer's final decision and order um, and either deny, approve, or modify uh, that decision uh, and write a report uh, within 30 days that addresses that decision and uh, includes findings of fact and conclusions uh, of law. Uh, and so you have the uh, information that was prevented in front of the hearing officer and you know the way that uh, we propose that this work is there be an opportunity uh, for green things to provide um, some commentary or explanatory information regarding uh, the uh, documentation you have before you and then the flood control district brian jones will talk about any clarifying information uh, from uh, from the district's perspective, uh, you know, of the documentation you have in front of you, and then questions if you have them, and then again, uh, uh, hopefully or preferably that you know you guys would um, render a decision today, and then as suggested in the next agenda item, uh, uh, set up a meeting date for uh, the uh, final written order of the. Um, Board of Hearing Review so that you could vote on it. So that would that's the goal for today. Uh, and if uh, that's OK with folks, um, I would then suggest that uh, Green Things could uh, begin with any statements they have. Chris, you might want to uh, stop sharing your screen. Oh, yeah. Apologize. All right. Yeah, let's begin. Um, oh, we can't I hear you, uh, Mr. Labor. We can't Mr. hear you, unfortunately. Yeah. No. Uh oh. <laughs> Still can't hear you. No. No. Maybe check device settings to see what microphone it's hooked to. You can also um, call in so you can watch the video, but you can speak via phone uh, on a call in and that information should be in the email that was sent out.
in case you do need it, the um, call in number um, Joe just put in the tail. It looks like OK, it looks like I'm letting you in here now. All right, can you hear me now? Yep. Right. Uh, Mike and speaker. Mike and speaker. OK, good morning. Can everybody hear me? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, so my name is uh, Edward Labor. I am here at the law office, at the, uh, at the architectural offices of uh, Siebert Franks. I have my clients here, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Westenborg, and my co-counsel, uh, Larry Hecker. So this is an appeal from the findings uh, of the uh, of the hearing officer that was presented uh, on uh, that was uh, entered on August 23rd. If we could go to page two. Can we ask to share a screen? Oh, we need to share a screen. Can somebody allow that? So. Mr. Labor, you should be able to do that on your end. There's three dots at the at the top of the window. Um, and it should say share screen. Or actually, it's the arrow with the box around it. Yeah, there should be a the white wave. box with yeah, an arrow inside of it that points out. It'll or next control to, shift E. It should be uh, just to the left of it. There should be a red button that says leave. On it, it should be just next to that. There should be a white box with a, an arrow pointing upwards. It allows you to share screen. We do see it, Mr. Labor. There we go. Now we see your screen. So, uh, and I'm going to bring that. I mean, sorry, I yeah. There you go. All right. <laughs> so, the first place we look is this is an appeal from this decision. And this decision says under line five, this decision is supported by substantial evidence in the record. And a statement was made by um, Mr. Chef that there was evidence in the record. However, uh, I've listened to the tape. Uh, there was a letter perhaps from the county, but uh, these are not findings. This is just a conclusory statement that that there's evidence in the record. And what the hearing officer actually was required to do was to make findings. And if we go to page uh, 18. Right. Go to page 18, looking at the code. And the code is 16.20.050. It says permit and denial conditions. Now, there's not a permit that's being denied, but the standard would be the same regarding findings of fact. And under B, it says, in making such a determination, the chief engineer shall consider the following factors. Let me go to the next page. And the factors are as follows. Danger to life, person, and property due to flood, height, velocities, or direction of flow. The danger the materials may be swept onto other lands. The proposed water supply and sanitation systems. The susceptibility of the proposed development or its contents to flood or erosion damage or to effect on other owners, the availability of alternative locations, the compatibility of the proposed use with existing regulatory floodplain uses, the relationship of the proposed use to any comprehensive plan and floodplain management, the ability of conventional and emergency vehicles to access the property, expected heights, where there's disturbance to riparian habitat. So as we look at this regulation, which is the, uh, which are the rules that we have to follow, none of these findings were made. And so just to simply say that it's in the record, 
that there's substantial evidence is quite simply it's insufficient. Now, we have to look and see what is applied, what rules apply here. And the rules that apply to the flood management are found, page four, under section 16.04.020, in conformance with AIRS, ARS 483609, this ordinance provides for protection of the public health, safety, and welfare by regulation of flood and erosion hazard areas to control flood hazards and to carry out the requirements of the National Flood Insurance Program. And then, if you turn to page seven, excuse me, page six. Under section 16.04.050, we have the performance standards. And if you turn to page seven, <clears throat> all of the FEMA regs and all of the federal insurance uh, rules uh, are incorporated into Pima County. All applicable floodplain, this is the last sentence of that paragraph, all applicable floodplain management, flood hazard, and flood control regulations, rules and standards promulgated by the state of Arizona and the federal government are hereby incorporated. This is an important point because, Air, because Pima County uh, has to enforce its own rules, but it also has to enforce the rules from the federal government. One of the difficulties here in dealing with flood management in Tucson, Arizona, is that the same rules that apply under the federal um, uh, the federal scheme apply equally to Davenport, Iowa. They apply equally to New Orleans, Louisiana. And it's important to understand that just because we have certain rules that are applied to every one in the rule itself, there has to be some rational relationship between the rule and the actual facts on the ground. What is the purpose? What is the purpose of these regulations? And the purpose is found, page five. The purpose of this title under 16.04.030 uh, D. The purpose of this title is to protect the public health, safety, and general welfare of the citizens of Pima County and protect the natural character of our water courses, water resources, and environment by adopting regulations designed to minimize floods, meet or exceed federal requirements, establish minimum flood protection, regulate encroachment, and encourage the most effective expenditures of public money for flood control projects. It continues on to the next page, which is page six. I'm not gonna read them all, but there has to be a relationship between the enforcement of a regulation and the purpose for which the regulation is created. So here we have Green Things, which has a number of buildings that have now been called into question. And the county has come in and said that these buildings uh, don't meet the requirements of the rule within the four corners of the rule. But there's been no finding that the buildings themselves are somehow in violation of the core purpose of the regulations, which is essentially to protect property, uh, health, life of and, and adjacent property owners from damage in the event that there is a flood. None of those findings have been made. 
and none of the regulations uh, that are that the county is seeking to impose actually answers the question as to whether imposition or not meets the core uh, the core um, purpose of these regulations. Now, if you turn to page uh, 10, please. There's a number of uh, definitions that are used in the code. And I have to tell you, I, I've been uh, studying water law now for about a week. And so I know less than everyone here, but I have been forced to read the code. And I read it for, forward and backwards. And sometimes it is very important that we go back and look at what it is we're doing and why it is we're doing it. Turn to page one. It's not incidental that in our state constitution, the very first sentence reads, section one, of article one, of article two, a frequent recurrence to fundamental principles is essential to the security of individual rights and the perpetuity of a free government. Now, although we're just talking about flood management, we're talking about permits, it doesn't matter that we're not talking about huge lofty principles of, of, um, of national importance. What is important is that when we stand up before we do this meeting and we take the Pledge of Allegiance, it's because we all believe in the core principles of our country. We can never lose sight of that. And it doesn't matter whether we're talking about uh, lofty principles on a national level or we're talking about local matters. In fact, if local matters don't comply with, uh, with certain rules that we've all signed on to in our constitution, things begin to rot from the bottom up. And so I would submit to you that these principles that we're gonna talk about in a minute are every bit as important to the citizens that are involved in this case as they are involved in any case big or small. Bear with me one second, please. I don't want to find my so there's some things have happened here that uh, were brought up to the to the uh, hearing officer in the last hearing. Mr. Westenborg uh, made his presentation and he brought us some things that should concern everyone, everyone. And those concerns are, is green things being treated in a fundamentally fair way as its neighbors? If the answer is, Yes, they are. Well, then Green Things is going to have to comply with the rulings. However, if they are not, then it is not Green Things who has the problem. It is the county. Although this is not a variance hearing, it is worthwhile to look at the code to see one of the uh, concepts that transcends everything in the code and everything else in our law. Turn to page 15. Under section 16.56.030, there's a section there called authority to issue variances. It says, to the extent permitted by Arizona statute, the board shall hear and decide all requests for variances from the requirements of this title. 
A variance is subject to conditions to ensure that the variance does not constitute a grant of special privileges inconsistent with the limitations on the similar property in a regulatory floodplain or erosion hazard area. So we're not seeking a variance yet, but we might be, depending on, uh, on how this goes. However, I'd like to show you a couple of photos. And I will remind uh, us all that Pima County is subject to the exact same regulations and rules and laws that any other property owner is subject to. They're not exempt for any reason. They can't exempt themselves because the FEMA rules and the federal insurance, uh, flood insurance rules apply equally to the county. Now there's a number of disparate treatment. There's a number of examples of disparate treatment between green things and its neighbors. Just going to focus on one. There's a few of them. Uh, we, you know, we sent a, a few, but I'm going to focus on one, which I think encapsulizes and focuses on the problem that I'm trying to present to you. Do we have a photo of the bathroom in Fenton Park? So one of the issues here is if you if you're building in a floodplain even if there's never been a flood, or even if there are no floods, if you're enforcing a rule just simply for the sake of enforcing a rule, certain buildings have to be elevated to avoid a flood, to avoid damage. You know, we were thinking about this before. If you're in Davenport, Iowa, the rules make a lot of sense. If you were to build a Walmart on the banks of the Mississippi River, and there's a thousand people in the store at any given time, and there's a flood, well, that rule makes rational sense. Maybe you shouldn't have a Walmart built on the banks of the Mississippi River where it floods. Here, here we don't have a wall. Have a wall. Good morning. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Hi, this is this is Michael LeBlanc. I'm a deputy county attorney for Pima County, and I'm representing the district this morning. Um, I just want to, for the record, uh, and preserve that uh, the district is objecting uh, to the evidence that's being presented uh, this morning by Green Things. Um, some of the argument that you heard this morning regarding, uh, you know, the standards for a permit, the equal protection argument about mis you know mistreating Green Things. Uh, differently or treating green things differently from its neighbors. Uh, in the district's uh, view, this is all irrelevant to what is before the board this morning. Um, we don't think it's a good use of this board's time to go into these new uh, arguments and to hear um, this presentation on what appears to be um, new facts or, or at least allegedly new facts into the record. So I'm going to just put my uh, the district's objection on the record. Thank you. And. Didn't mean to interrupt, but I just didn't know if there was a better time to do it than now. Uh, I'll, uh, if you want me to respond to the objection, I'm certainly happy to do that. Um, does anybody want me to respond to the objection? Anybody Please hear do. me? Please do, yes. What the county thinks is relevant or irrelevant isn't the issue. The issue is what the law deems relevant. There was a lengthy presentation at the last hearing about disparate treatment. It's clearly in the record. And um, there's good reason why the county doesn't want this to be heard. And it's for obvious reasons, because the county, in our opinion, uh, is, uh, is uh, guilty of treating similarly people differently which is not permitted and so with that i would like to continue with my presentation so here we have these photos of four bathrooms in the brandy fenton park 
And uh, unless uh, uh, counsel is able to state why it is that the county uh, is not subject to the exact same rules as everyone else, then this becomes exceedingly relevant. And if you look at those photos, you will see that none of those structures, they're all bathrooms, are elevated. None of them. And yet the county is telling green things that their bathroom, I don't know if we have a picture of their, of their bathroom, uh, uh, has the same problem, is that it's not elevated. So if the county is being held to a different standard, and I challenge the county right now, right at this moment, to tell us what variance, what permit, what permission uh, Brandy Fenton Park has to maintain these buildings in, in this fashion without complying with the requirements of the flood district um, to tell us what it is. And if they can't tell us what it is, well, then the issue of disparate treatment, the issue of weak, equal protection is front and center. And until that question is answered, the issue of the permits or lack thereof should not be answered. The county needs to answer this. And uh, if they want to do it now, that's fine. If they want to right. present something to show uh, I'll, us I'll why. Reply. Is All right. I'll reply. So, you know, the. Um, uh, there are numerous permits have been issued for various improvements. I believe the record from the uh, hearing uh, uh, officer was related to the historic uses uh, and the historic buildings. And when modifications were made to those permits were issued uh, with respect to bathrooms, um, if, if there were other improvements made, I'll tell you that uh, as we done the, the equitable treatment is treating folks to the same standard, as you say, and we and we can and will treat folks to the same standard. But the uh, uh, reconstruction of buildings uh, requires permits regardless. And if there are is information that we didn't have previously that uh, we can pursue those too. But they that becomes a separate issue for enforcement. Uh, and the germane issue for enforcement today is green things. So uh, lowering the standard to uh, nobody needs permits ever uh, is not the right standard. It is uh, you know upon receipt of information of improvements in the floodplain uh, without relevant permits is things we can pursue. We do know that there is some practice on Brandy Fenton for receiving permits. We have issued them for the historic structures. The claim was made that uh, green things. Uh, had somehow its historic status, which isn't true. Uh, and but the, those historic buildings, uh, uh, when uh, uh, improved, did have permits, uh, and we can pursue these uh, two on a separate track. Uh, but uh, again, this is r related to the reconstruction of buildings on green things. I, I would also oh. add that you know I don't know the status of permits for these specific four uh, buildings, but I would point out that you know this is only a partial picture of those buildings. Restroom number three, for example, does have flood vents, which is an option for uh, having a structure in compliance uh, with the ordinance. Um, so you know at this point, you know since this is new evidence, you know we cannot make a statement as to whether. Each, any of these individual structures have a permit or they are in compliance. If it is determined that they need a permit and are not in compliance, then th the district would certainly pursue that and ensure that those buildings are constructed in compliance. We claim no uh, exemption uh, from our rules, uh, nor do we expect exemptions from our rules, uh, and we expect all county structures to comply just as everybody else does. So if you look at restroom number four, that certainly looks like a modern structure. And um, the issue was brought up and um, the county uh, it, it appears to be admitting that they don't know whether or not they, that there have been permits, but if, they, if there is no permit, they'll get one. And that's exactly the problem. They don't have a permit. And yet, Green Things is being singled out here. It is being being treated uh, differently than Brandy Fenton Park. 
who's uh, subject to the exact same rules. So none of this is new. And what's interesting is that when we go back to the, um, the findings, there is no findings. There's no findings of anything. This is an appeal from the findings of fact from the hearing officer in August. Well, there are no findings of fact. There's simply a conclusory statement that says to the, from the officer says, yeah, I think there's substantial evidence. Well, that's not the way findings of fact are made, and that's certainly not the way an appeal based on findings of fact is uh, is to be handled. If we were in, uh, in, 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 a, in a true appellate situation, the appellate court would, would require that this case be sent back to the hearing officer uh, to make actual findings of fact. This would be automatically vacated or reversed. And, and that's, just, that's just a statement. And I think that uh, I have a feeling that counsel will agree with me. May not, he may not agree that it applies in these proceedings, but certain issues of, of uh, due process and fairness apply in these proceedings. They transcend everything that happens between citizens and their government. So, um, so here's the point. I'm not going to go through the, the, the other, but there are other uh, structures. I, I think it's called the post house. Uh, I don't know if we have a, have a photo of it, uh, but that's now commercial they don't have uh, any kind of, of permit that we're aware of. And if the county is going to say that, that they have a permit and they don't, uh, they ought to choose their words. Yeah, so here we have so, some other examples of property that is no longer in um, in compliance and they have no permits has the county granted these buildings the required permits just like they're requiring those from green things or are they going to are they going to be able to answer that today or are they going to say well if, if we don't have them uh, we'll get them and if it's the latter then it's the county who has a problem here because the county is violating the rights of green things and that's really the point here. And until that issue is resolved, we don't get to the issue of the permits. Now, I would like to say this. Green Things wants to settle this case. And I hope that the county wants to settle this case. There is, and I pointed this out, there are variances permitted. There is no question. If the county is being held to a certain standard and is required to get permits, Green Things can sign on to that because they're being treated fairly. If the buildings on, can't get permitted in the neighbors as they're required and they're going to be torn down, well, Green Things will do the same thing. All they're asking is to be treated fairly. Now, I'm going to throw this out. This is a suggestion, and uh, I, we would really like to settle this case before there's a decision made by by this board, we would like to be able to submit some requests for variances or sit down and have have a good discussion uh, with the county. And I would uh, submit that uh, any decision by this board, if, it, if, if, the, if the county is in agreement, I, I'm, I'm speaking specifically to counsel for the county, I think he's the one who needs to answer this, um, is that we, we hold the uh, the decision by this board in abeyance until we have an opportunity to file uh, a request for a variance or variances, and um, and we'll have a meeting. And if it turns out that in the meantime they're able to show us what the uh, the permits are for these other buildings and these neighbors, fine. And if they can't, well, then either everybody's going to get a variance or nobody's going to get a variance. And that just has to do with fundamental fairness. And uh, with that committee, I think uh, th those are my uh, th those are my concluding remarks. Thank you. I'm not sure how I moved this. I don't want to disconnect. Mr. Chairman. Is this is council interested? This is John Wallace. Can you hear me? 
Yes, John. Okay, good, good. I was, uh, this is the first time I spoke, so I wasn't sure <laughs> my microphone was working right. Um, I would like to make a motion if that is the proper format for um, addressing this matter. I would like to move uh, in this matter uh, to uphold the floodplain enforcement hearing officer findings and recommendations issued August 23rd, 2021, and the final decision and order of the chief engineer issued August 24th, 2021. Is there a second? Uh, hold on a second. Is this, am I mooted or not? No, we can hear you. Now you can talk. Now. Yeah. So uh, uh, I object uh, on, on behalf of Green Thing that no decision be made until uh, the findings of fact are articulated. And if they haven't been articulated by the by the hearing officer before, then you can't make a decision today. You'll have Mr. to send this back to the hearing officer. Mr. Labor. Alternatively, yes. You're opposing a motion that has not been seconded yet. I, I suggest that you hold off until there's been a second, at least. And then the discussion is for the board. Oh, all right, sorry. I'm, I, I, I still have my lawyer hat. <laughs> I'll second. All right, so we have a second on this. Carry it to vote. All eyes. Uh, uh, Mr. Langham, I suggest you will allow for some discussion after the second. Sir? Like uh, uh, I'll say <clears throat> to, to the point that uh, Mr. Labor uh, was making, I, I believe the process would be you provide the district with uh, a decision and some direction to draft language that proposes the findings of fact and the conclusions of law. Uh, and that would be prepared by us. And then you would meet again to, to uh, approve that final report. The obligation of the Board of Hearing Review is to issue a written order, which will occur in the future, but you would be providing direction to us uh, to uh, uh, draft the language that includes the findings of fact and conclusions of law. Am I on? Uh, may may I speak? Can you shut down the screen yeah. share, please? Oh. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Absolutely. Findings of fact are made by the finders of fact. Findings of fact are made by the hearing officer, not after the fact by uh, by the county. If the county wants to make findings of fact, that's a um, well, that's putting the cart before the horse. They're basically saying, well, there are no findings of fact, and we'll do it. We'll do it um, after uh, there there are no findings uh, to uh, to shoehorn this into whatever. Uh, whatever we need to do to make sure that uh, that the green things uh, loses their their appeal. You don't have findings of fact on appeal. The findings of fact have to come from the finder of fact. And people from the county are not finders of fact because they're not objective. They are advocates. This has to go back to the hearing officer. So uh, if, if I may add, um, so in the attachments and in the uh, information that was uh, provided to the hearing officer and reviewed by the hearing officer uh, in, in the hearing uh, were a number of exhibits. One is an aerial photograph um, that states uh, what was known about the structures that are, uh, were built or uh, modified or used in a, in a manner other than permitted. Uh, that was an aerial photograph with uh, red annotations on it. Uh, and indeed, there was actually a, an exhibit provided. Um, uh, it was done by, I believe, Seaver Franks, although their name isn't on it, the copy that I have, um, that identifies the buildings as A, B, C, D1, D2, uh, E, and F. 
uh, that was presented to the hearing and it includes uh, not only the use of the building, uh, but when they were constructed or reconstructed. Uh, so uh, these facts were uh, presented uh, to the hearing officer and were reviewed by the hearing officer. Um, I would also you know, point out that uh, pursuant to section 16.20.100, sorry, point zero one zero of the ordinance, a floodplain use permit shall be obtained for any new structure, a change of use for any portion of an existing structure, substantial improvements or other improvements to a structure where the value of the material and labor exceeds $7,500 or any other development upon any land within a FEMA designated special flood hazard area. This entire property is within a FEMA uh, designated special flood hazard area. Um, <clears throat> the restroom identified in bu as building A on uh, the Green Things exhibit uh, was constructed in 2018 within a FEMA special flood hazard area without the required permit. The retail building identified as building B was constructed in 2018 in a FEMA special flood hazard area without the required permit. The chicken coop was torn down and a new building, uh, retail building identified as building C was constructed in 2017 in a FEMA special flood hazard area without the required permit. The retail building identified as building D1 was remodeled under a 2016 floodplain use permit that limited the use of the structure to limited parking and storage. Retail use is not consistent with the conditions of the floodplain use permit or federal, state, and local regulations. Retail, uh, sorry, building D2, uh, similar, but in 2017, also under a floodplain use permit that limited the use of that building to limited parking and storage. It is currently by the admission of green things uh, used for retail use. Again, that's not consistent with the conditions of the permit. Uh, the the uh, tanks identified as item E, uh, the uh, water tanks, I guess they are. Uh, the district is actually um, capitulated on that and said they do not need to be anchored. Uh, so that is no longer an issue of concern. Uh, the cargo containers is item F on, in the uh, Green Things exhibit uh, are considered structures by definition of floodplain management ordinance and structures must be permitted to be anchored to prevent flotation, collapse and lateral movement. They are also subject to all provisions of the ordinance. And Mr. LeBlanc, you also have your hand. Did I have one so, last word? No, I think I'm, I no, I think I think it's my uh, my opportunity to speak, Mr. Labor. Okay. Okay. So I just want to assure the board that it's this this matter is properly before it. Uh, the posture of the board, I'm sorry, the posture of today's hearing um, is ready for your uh, decision. Uh, Mr. Labor has made some misleading uh, statements to the board and I just want to put things into context. Um, as far as Arizona revised statute 48-3615.01, which governs this process today, it provides that um, the hearing officer at the completion of at the completion of the hearing, the hearing officer shall issue a written findings and recommendations for the appropriate measure to be taken to abate or ameliorate any harm or damages arising from the violation and for the imposition of any civil penalties attributed to the violation. Then the board of uh, directors for the Pima County Flood Control District approved rules for the hearing officer and the process before him or her. At the conclusion of the hearing office, uh, the hearing before the hearing officer, the board approved that if the respondent is found in viol in responsible for the violations, the written findings shall include the following. A finding that the decision was supported by substantial evidence in the record, and that is in the hearing officer's finding and recommendations. B, a recommendation for appropriate measures to abate or ameliorate any harm or damage arising from the violation. Again, that's in the hearing officer's findings and recommendations. And C, a recommendation for the imposition of civil penalties. That is also in the hearing officer's recommendations. And so what Mr. Labor is arguing and what he's insisting upon is simply not necessary um, for this board to reach a decision today. What's not before the board is not whether or not the county is in compliance with the flood control 
our floodplain ordinance is whether green things is in compliance with the floodplain ordinance. And I ask the board to stay focused on that and not be distracted by uh, these irrelevant arguments um, and attempts to derail the process. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, I'd like to direct, uh, this is John Wallace, I'd like to direct a question to uh, <clears throat> county staff and council, if I could. Um, the motion that I made, was there a concern that it was lacking, given that it directs um, the board to accept and uphold the findings of the hearing officer, is there a concern that the uh, motion is lacking somehow? No, I, I don't I wouldn't think so. So. Wait, so go ahead, Eric. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I think that's sufficient. Yes, the, the you know the goal of the district is just to you know achieve compliance, and um, I think uh, you know the finding of the board um, will you know help us to to do that. Thanks. I would I would also add actually before the before the board does you know make a decision that um, you know as uh, most in this hearing are aware um, you know the flood control district um, as mentioned by um, Mr. Labor um, you know. The district is subject to state and federal regulations uh, and further uh, in addition to what Mr. Labor said, uh, the district is also uh, subject to the rules of the National Flood Insurance Program and it participates in the community rating system, uh, which is uh, a system that rewards uh, communities for going above and beyond uh, the federal minimum standards. Uh, the district uh, is currently a class five community in that community rating system in April of, of 2022. We're going to become a class three community. That rating, uh, once we become a class three, will result in a, a, a flood insurance premium discount for all unincorporated uh, residents of Pima County who have flood insurance, a 35% discount on their flood insurance. If uh, the district is found to be not upholding the National Flood Insurance Program minimums or indeed the more strict standards of the flood control district in the state of Arizona, uh, that rating could be jeopardized uh, and potentially the Pima County, Pima County could be removed from the community rating system altogether, which would result in um, after April about $1.6 million of lost savings to uh, the residents of Pima County uh, if we were to be removed from that program. Uh, therefore, it is uh, extremely important that um, the flood control district uh, enforce its regulations to the greatest extent possible and to not issue variances because variances are, are viewed negatively by the community rating system and could negatively impact our rating. Understood. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, this is uh, John Wallace. Um, yes. I just wanted to note my uh, motion and second as seconded is still on the floor. Um, if there is no further discussion, I would respectfully request a vote of the board on that motion. And I would remind the, this group that the uh, speakers speak at the pleasure of the board as uh, chaired by the chairman. Acknowledged. And we have heard. I, I believe we should move forward to a vote of the board. So in the affirmative. Aye. 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 All right. So let the record stand that it was a unanimous vote. In favor of Mr. Wallace's uh, mention. <laughs> Forgive my wording. Um, motion. Your motion. 
and I, I I wrote down my motion so that I can provide it later. Uh, for the board. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Next step. So no, do we move forward to segment number three? Select a meeting date for the approval of the final report. Or is there? Uh, yeah. So you know the the uh, rules of procedure state that um, the board of hearing review shall submit a final uh, written order to the chief engineer within 30 days. So if, uh, you know, uh, the district's preference would be for the board to select a, a meeting date, um, you know, somewhere towards but towards the tail end of 30 days from today so that you can um, uh, review and approve the um, final uh, written order. Uh, and this that will give us an opportunity to work with all parties to uh, uh, arrive uh, to that final written order with the findings of fact and cl conclusions of law. All right. So 30 days uh, or 13th, so. Moving forward, that would be, that works well as January on the 13th being a Thursday. Or are we talking about business days? I believe uh, it says 30 days, which means business days. So I think that they're yeah, any time within that time frame, I think uh, uh, it's fine as long as it works for the relevant parties. Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, sir. It, it sounds like the uh, district staff needs to act on our recommendation within 30 days. So perhaps if we provided that to them a few days prior to that, it would give them clerical administrative time to deal with it. Agreed. All right, so we will coordinate and submit to the county before the end of the week. Uh, Mr. Chair, a uh, question for uh, district staff. The item three on the agenda is select a meeting date. Is that a separate and distinct meeting of this board of review? It, it, it would be a, a separate and distinct meeting for the board of hearing and review for the purposes of, uh, you know, uh, voting, uh, discussing uh, and uh, voting on the uh, final written order. And does that need to be noticed? It will be noticed. So perhaps this week might may not be possible. Uh, so, so I think you know I think the district's position is you know if if the hearing itself is within is is roughly thirty days out, then uh, that will give time to write the um, written order and have it um, reviewed. Um, before that, <clears throat> the notice only needs to occur some small number of days before the academic meeting. Having that information uh, earlier helps well, helps us, you know, uh, aim for completing that report. Well, Mr. Chair, about if you're talking, you need to both notice the meeting and give the staff a little time to process what uh, the outcome of that meeting. I'm going to suggest the first week of January for the um, for the uh, meeting date for approval of the final order. If I'm understanding the constraints on the process, so so actually doing it later in January would give a, give more time to write the report and um, get it reviewed. Acknowledged. So we will coordinate the actual date. Or 
I, I don't know if it's possible, but I think the interest is to, if uh, everyone's calendars are available, to try to calendar a date now. Certainly. And I think that we would stay within the 30 days. 11th, uh, Tuesday of each January 11th would be good. The 12th would be fine. Or to, to Mr. Wallace's recommendation, Friday the 7th. Um, the Friday the 7th is going to work better for me than the 11th. Before 2 p.m. on Friday the 7th would be adequate for me. I am available on the 7th. Either the 7th or 11th works for me. And I will say, I will also say the 11th is fine as long as we do it in the afternoon, not in the morning. So, so far, the 7th in the a.m. is looking good. Subject to Miss Lane. I'm pretty locked in. Did you say before two is OK or after two? Uh, no, before, before two, two or yeah. after. I could probably push 330, but more like four. Can we, is the afternoon of the 11th OK, or does it have to be in the morning? Preference of the board. Uh, anytime the 7th or 11th works for me, this is John. 11th is wide open. All others? Let's do, can we do 11, 11th in the afternoon? Like one? Okay. Got a thumbs up from Ms. Lane. Got a thumbs up from Mr. Rod. Okay. Okay. One o'clock. All right. So let's see. And now on to item number four, adjournment. Uh, I thank Mr. Labor and his clients, uh, county and county staff. Appreciate your time. And uh, move to your second. Thank you guys for your time. Yeah, just thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you folks. Thank you. Happy holidays. Yeah, you do. So this is what I understand. You can't grant a variance because it might affect our rating. That's yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can't, you can't what? You can't. You can't ask for. You, they're going to deny a variance even if you have everything you need for a variance because it might affect our rating. Yeah. yeah. The the and, yeah and well that's the insurance rate. So that answers our question. Did they get variances for those other buildings? Probably not. Yeah. Well, 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 they couldn't answer the question. They couldn't. Okay. Yeah. I mean, he's saying, well, we'll, we'll get them. Yeah. And if we don't have them, we'll get them. They didn't have them. Right. Yeah. If they don't have them, we'll get them. I was surprised at that. They didn't have them in their hip pocket ready to pull out, did they? Right. And, and they you, knew. They you, knew know what, you know what else is wrong with that? He pointed out the one of the four, and you pointed out, has flood vents. Uh, rest I three, I think. Exempt. It shows flood vents, but it's not occupiable. It's not usable yeah. as a restroom. Yeah. Well, flood vents. There's other things wrong with what they did. So they don't have findings of fact by the by the by the finder of fact. So right. he's gone through the record and says, well, this is what we have. Yeah. And they're going to make their own findings of fact, which I don't. Right. Right. That's yeah. They. I mean, it's ex, ex post facto. Ex, yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Bill of a tender. Is that Spanish? Bill of a tender is conviction by legislation. So, <laughs> so we, you start talking to them over there and tell them that your client has, has instructed you that a solution is not reached to begin work on a lawsuit in which we're going to have a number of other discriminatory issues and we're going to sue for damages. And we're also going to bring up all these issues about the the, uh, the judge, the, the former uh, county attorney. Well, and, um, th this is a um, mm -hmm. this is a kind of a new area for me. Uh, filing a lawsuit in superior court from one of these. <laughs> well, 
I, I wonder if we get a whole new record. Do we get to do it? We have to be able to do depositions and everything else. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's a lawsuit. That's sure, right. absolutely. Um, but hopefully, once they find out you're going to do it and what these other issues are with Deb Ward and, and her friend, John, uh, Jan, whatever her name is, the other one. up. There are two the judges. might go off. It doesn't have anything to do with these hearings, really. This, this, um, so Larry, you know, prophesied this correctly. This is, you know, they're going oh, to do exactly just like you know, they spent half an hour trying to look at the calendar. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and it was a joke, just like the other thing. Yeah. Well, just at a second yeah. level. Yeah. They're just following their yeah, but we got a bunch of stuff in the record. And then, okay. Yeah. And, you know, they, they, they've ignored it. I don't think they answered the question about, about the county. Okay. And, I mean, we kind of knew this was going to happen, yeah. but, you know, I think we made a good argument. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The record, yeah. Uh, the record is good, and to get them to say that they're not inclined to give variances because that's a big problem. That for was, them. that was, yeah. Yeah, that was huge. That's I think not, that's not a, a standard by which you should govern a request for a variance. Well, that's right, and 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 they haven't, you know. Hey, Valerie, um, we were just, okay, she's off. We are now shutting the recording.